What's up everybody? Welcome to another video in the Ideal Auto Factory. Today, gonna be working on this bad boy right here, the good old TDP Pigeon. The TDP Pigeon. And it is fully transformed since the last time you saw it. This is part three. Let's keep God first and let's get into the video. Today, we're going over a lot. So let me flip the camera and show you what's going on. All right, so this wheel is on backwards because it treads backwards, but this is a crawler wheel. It is a 1.9 inch and the 30 millimeter Valino wheel fits right over it with when you boil it. So it's a tight fit. There's no foam in there. Wanted to talk about these wheels really quick because here you can see I have caliper rotor, nice setup in there. Good old setup in there, but over here I don't. I have 3D printed an adapter because right now this wheel doesn't want to cooperate. And it's a little too wide. You see that fit mitt right here? It's a little too much offset. And then when you buy the regular offset, where's the other wheel? There we go. Gosh. On this wheel, this wheel is the regular offset, and that is just really wide. So I'm working on a design, 3D printing one right up right now on the 3D printing setup. But working on one right now that'll make the offset correct. This is sticking out a little too far from me. Now, that is one unique thing that I wanted to point out on this car. I really do want to run these wheels. Yeah, they're heavier, but I... If Overdose can sit here and make some aluminum wheels and you're all gonna buy them, I know you are, then I can sit here and get on some Endura freaking crawler wheels or even the carbon fiber ones because I know that's such a unique style of wheel and I'm drifting in my garage, so who cares anyway? Second thing. Here is my 24K RC Arlos, RC technology, however you wanna call it. Full on everything. Brian 350Z, everything. Like, look, it's even got a lip kit on it. We got the 3D printed light buckets. We got a big spoiler. List goes on all the way down there. Even fender flares. I also have a body that I bought from a really, like, really awesome guy in the hobby. Um, his name is Chris. I bought his... Uh, BMW with fender flares on it so I can learn and see his body fully built already because he wanted to get rid of it. I bought that body just to see how well put together something is when you have fender flares and all this extra accessories because I've never done anything like that in my life on a car like that. So this is going to get the works and it's going to take a while. The TDP is my end of year build. I'm not building anything else for the rest of the year except all of this stuff. I also have paint for it. This is just one of the colors, fluorescent green. And I think I gotta go out and buy some white, but there's that. I'm gonna be airbrushing it and stencils and everything else. So great project, however long it takes me, it takes me. I got three kids and they require more of my time than this stuff. So who knows how long it's gonna take. Now, on to the third thing. So we talked about the wheels, we talked about the body. Let's talk about where we left off, okay? Because you guys had two build videos, one was the front end the re and the other part was the rest of the chassis. So right now I have a fully built car, ESE motor, everything. Let me show you everything that I've Put on this car since the last video. First thing, got the cap head screws all around, everywhere. There's cap head screws everywhere. Even there's even cap head screws on the caliper. So got cap head screw like in my own dress up thing till I get titanium. Then we have overdose standard dampers with the slideology adjustable upper like top cap, whatever you want to call it. 
So I have a fully adjustable damper here. And the same goes for the rear. Ooh, we have ESC, we have a motor, we have calipers, we got more cap heads. Got the over, I mean the overdose, the Rev D rear arms, like stock RDX rear arms, the number seven TK mounts on both front and rear, and the Yokomo Teens rear uprights. <coughs> oh boy. Allergy season is getting a bit weird. Now back to what I was saying. Let's not skip over the 10.5T. Oh, this is a full hobby wing right now. Then we have, ooh, look at that. Overdose DAIS gyro. And then we have the RS D. We have the overdose servo and gyro combo. Then it's all on the MT12, and then we got good battery connectors. Yeah, we got all of that. And lastly, I know y'all clearly see it. Belt drive. Oh, this is so quiet. It is so quiet. Like, this is the most quiet thing I've ever heard, and it's the coolest thing I've ever heard. What is it? What do we do with it? Why does it look like that? What are we here for on this video? This right here. We're here to fix this. Currently, it is all hacked up and ugly in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that is just not how it's supposed to look. It is so ugly back there. Like, you don't even want it. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Let me show you. All right. It, it is... It's pretty bad back there, okay? I'm just warning you now. So, loosen this one up, loosen that one down there up, give ourselves some room for the belt to come off. So the belt's off. Now. Oh, stuff dropping. Look at this. What is that? It's ugly. Okay. Gearbox. Top shaft. Let's see what we can make happen. We got Yokomo versus RDX in the flesh. Let's see. Okay, so RDX is a little more that way. Hmm. Hmm. Other than that, the uh, yeah, S just slid over just a little bit. So we'll see. Let's see what we're working with here. Hmm. Okay. Let's just try and put it on there. See what happens. You guys are learning along with me. I've never actually done this before. So pin's a lot closer there, but you're, ooh, that's. So far spread out. Come on, you're in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if this will work. Going to keep the faith though. Because it's, it's on there. Let me figure out something and I'll be right back. So I got it to work. And... Not user friendly, not really conventional. It's my style. And I'm gonna just show you how I do it, how I did it. And then also, I gotta at least drive it to make sure it's legit. So stick around for the end of the video to see if it actually works. All right. I feel like I'm gonna lose a lot of you on this one, but um, hey. You won't, you won't do anything unless you try. All right, so it's all back together. It's all good. Spinny, spinny, spinny. Nice. There's red right there. That is heat shrink. This, that's good old heat shrink. So let's take it apart. And let me show you what I got. 
Oh boy. So only this part matters, right? Two, same bearing I kept on the left side. So we're all still regular TDP on the left. Or on, yeah, that's the left side. Yeah, left side of the gearbox when you look at it from the rear. So we're still the same right there. RDX, uh, top shaft. Then we have two pieces of heat shrink. Heat shrink you probably just do one. But I did two for good measure to get that extra, you know, just level of security there. What that does is that stops this bearing on this side from, well, not stops the bearing. The bearing in there is a, it's half the size. So it's not this wide. It's, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not this wide. It is half that. So two millimeters, not four. And then the inner diameter is the size of this thing, not the size. Uh, it's hard to say. The inner diameter is the size of this, not the size of that. So the shaft rests in here and not right there. So I needed to make a new version of this thing right here long story short you can get this whole thing to like go in there and then instead of it stopping right there where it normally would it stops where the heat shrink is all right i sanded that down like 10 rotations with 800 grit sandpaper and that's the gist of it is it conventional is it what most people would do no but I got chassis over there that are normal so let's have some abnormality in our lives here and that's what it is assembled so now I'm gonna put everything back together motor and everything all assembled and then we're gonna get back to this bell drive see what we can do okay it's all back together. Now, just so you know that we changed things up, it's still red in there. So this is the RDX top shaft in a YD2 gearbox. I'll figure out what that bearing is. I know it's from a Sakura, but I'll put it in the description. A little heat shrink. So let's put a pin in that. Pins in. Now let's see what that uh what the shaft looks like all the way on now. Get there. Ooh. Room now to play. Alright. I like it. Let's tighten the bolt down. Which means you have to buy. You don't have to buy if you have the bolt already, but you gotta buy the spur gear holder set as well. Boom. I'm going to take that nut and put it on there. Okay, that was not great because it still wobbles. And that nut can go all the way in there. So now I need a spacer to go in between a nut and this thingy here to push it all the way. So let's take it off and see what we got. Let's try it out now. This is a wheel nut. Push down. There we go. And it is fitted. Good looking. Now let's straighten up the shaft. Pinion side. Move it over. I'll go ahead and turn it on. We're outside now in the garage. It's running. I turn my gyro gain down. MT12 remote does not change. It does not remember gyro settings. There we go. So now it's all running. I'm gonna lift it up and uh, see if it still has a wobble on that there pinion. I mean, sorry, spur. 
Let's find something to lift it up off the ground with and then I'll be right back. All right, we're off the ground now. And I used to have this wobble on the, on the spur gear side. Let's see if it still has it. Just barely. Barely. And I know that's all my fault. Because of how I messed that up. So I will be buying another spur gear holder and then another belt drive. But um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Listen to that. That's belt drive for you right there. All right, let's see a little, little drift around the track. Oh, that's not cool. Yeah, something's going on with this. Maybe I don't have enough battery voltage. Let's check that. That battery is at storage level. That battery is actually charged. So that was my bad. Now well, let's try this all over again. I think I think I figured it out. My ESC power wire into the receiver was not all the way down because I took that top deck off. And as you can see, I have everything like really tight on the top deck. So I may have pulled out that wire when lifting the top deck, taking these screws out right here. So final run, let's do it, man. Learning things on the fly here. So I wanted to close this video out. Uh, what'd you think of the driving? It's been a while since I've driven in this garage, just been having cars to wrap and not really anything to complain about. It's just like the garage just hasn't been empty to even do anything with. So yeah, it was the first time driving in a while. Um, and I just showed you a video of the car with the crawler wheels on it. I definitely did make the correct adapter and as you can see the fitment is pretty spot on for a body that's not really that wide so i look forward to what it looks like when a wide body is on it and i can make a wider adapter but overall we learned what do we learn what do we learn it's not really that conventional to do the belt drive swap um, and if you're really going to do it, you got to put your, you got to put your thinking cap on, but luckily this video kind of clears the air. So let's just recap everything. I bought a RDX top shaft because the spur gear holder for the belt drive did not have a grub screw in it. And then upon further inspection, me drilling a hole for the grub screw to go in to hold onto the YD2 top shaft. That didn't really look that good, and it's, it, the 
spurge was rob wobbling all over the place. So, hence the reason why I went and got this screw on type. So, then from there, the bearing that I use is in the description, and that's the one that's, you know, not as wide as the stock one. So, that would be one from a Sakura D5, and I'll have, it's in the description. I don't know why I keep saying that. So, from there, you stand down, the top shaft will stop her part. That's, you know, mine's I showed you all of that too. And then you put some heat shrink on. So far, so good. I mean, I'm in turbo and everything. Nothing's vibrating all over the place. Um, it works. There's a lot of stuff in drift cars that just works. I mean, we went from belt drive to all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's so many things that work, it's, it's crazy. But we're so locked into if it's not made from the factory, it's stupid. When sometimes the factory is the one that makes the gimmicks. But we're not going that route today. So, thank you for watching. Uh, and I enjoyed doing this. I enjoyed every part of this TDP build. This has been an awesome video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sticking around. I will catch you on the next video. Keep God first. Peace.